So hi guys, uh, welcome to Entire T YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be your host. I'm Sunny Kalyani, and we are going to have a small video. This is going to be a small section um, where we are going to talk about how to use NumPy to fa make your calculations faster, to reduce the times that uh, the code takes to compute things, such as SuperTrend in our case and ATR as well. Okay, so if you scroll down, it's the same thing. It's the same sheet. Everything is the same. Um, uh, yeah, so basically, just a copy of the previous videos, Jupyter Notebook. Um, the one thing that I've added is this 3B section, which is called faster superintend calculation. So what is here is there are two new functions this time. One is this one, ATR underscore NP, and the other one is superintend underscore NP. These as the name suggests, use NumPy arrays to calculate SuperTrend and ATR. So we are going to go through these functions in detail. I'm going to explain to you um, line by line what is going on and how have we achieved this. But before we go to that, um, I wanted to show you the time that it it uh, reduces. Okay. So what we are going to do is, first of all, let me restart the notebook so that we have a very clean slate and I'm just going to get the raw data okay so let it um, get the raw data we'll wait for a second okay guys so one thing that i've uh, noticed over here is that in uh, this cell number three we're using older functions to calculate um, date time older fun functions as in uh, these we already discussed shorter versions of the same thing shorter version to do the same thing so um yeah, I don't think that would cause any issue because we any we don't really care about that this part. Um, but you can refer for shorter versions of this in the previous video. One thing that I've done in data resampling, which is the next part, is that I have two cells over here. This cell contains the code to resample the data to one hour as it is written over here. And there is another cell which has the same code. The dif only difference is we have a new data frame which will come. Its name will be nifty data underscore 15 M. Um, and this data frame will be resampled to 15 minutes, right? So the uh, we're doing this because one hour will have, I don't know, 15, we saw it last time. It was somewhere around 15,000 rows. 15 minutes will go four times more than that, right? Because we have four times, four 15 minute sections in every hour. So almost four times. It, it might increase so the calculation time will also increase so that's what we're trying to simulate over here so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to get all both of these uh, data frames ready okay so it, it should take a little bit of time not that much so the one hour is ready and yeah so 15 minute is also ready yeah perfect so we're not uh, what we're going to do is we are going to initialize these older um, older ATR and SuperTrend functions just so that um, we have them as a reference okay these functions basically are just called ATR and SuperTrend the NumPy functions have underscore NP at the end okay the names are same just NPN is at the end okay so this is this is done now let's come to this part which is the faster SuperTrend computation right and I will explain these functions I'll just initialize them for now okay 200 SMA we don't really need that because we, we, we're not concerned with it right now now these are the four cells that I wanted to focus on for the time being first thing is this percentage percentage time what is what does it do this percentage percentage time is a special code that you can write in any of the cells of your Jupyter notebook uh, it should be at the start I suppose and what it will do is it will tell you how much time did the cell took to execute whatever is written inside of it so the uh, let's not focus uh, the Nietzsche, let's focus on these two cells, okay, where my um, arrow is, or my cursor is. So, what these two are doing is this first one is calling the normal super trend function which uses data frame columns to compute super trend. Um, we are going to see how much time on one hour data frame does it take with the old function, and then in this one, we are going to see the same data frame that will be there, one hour data frame, and we'll see how much time did the numpy array function took. Okay, so let's get into it. So I'm going to run this. Okay. Okay, guys. Yeah. So there was a small issue um, with the function, and also um, over here, what you uh, I, I I what I missed was that this line percentage percentage time. It should be two percentages, right? Um, should be 
the first line like in these cases it's the second line right so it wasn't working so it should be the first case first line i've not corrected it over here we will correct it when we come to that for now i've corrected these and now let's look at the time that these functions are taking because first i've run the super to normal function okay so this one is without npra and it should take somewhere around yeah so somewhere around 12 seconds is what it usually takes 11.8 seconds close right now if you look at this uh, line below 68 this is the super trend np function uh, and look at this so it didn't even take a second so that is um, the advantage right now what is happening over here is if you guys look at this nifty data okay let's look at the length of this this is 15472 uh, 427 rows right and if you look at nifty data 15 minutes sorry the length of it right so it's almost uh, four times right four times would be more than uh, 60000 this is 55000 so almost four times right so this should take in theory it should take almost four times this much time so let's look at how much time it takes i'm going to correct um, this put it up over here <coughs> let's run the old function first so it should take a bit of time right even if you're talking three times more then it should be around 35 36 seconds right so yeah we'll have to wait for it um to complete it because the rows are so many so yeah let's wait wait it out let's see what happens uh, how much time it takes because uh, the reason why i'm including this is because in the last video we also discussed that shifting towards 15 minute time frame would be uh advantages to us the number of points that we gain is increasing in that case so if you have to perform a lot of back tests right um regarding this then we have to have functions that are fast if it takes 42.2 seconds for it to calculate just the indicators then the back test is also going to take a lot of time right so let's now look at like let's now look at the npra function again it's one 120 milliseconds so yeah So now um I'm going to just discuss how uh, these functions are written and what what is the syntax and how how have we achieved this right so the first function is atr right what i do want to show you in this case is that in the previous atr function we were directly passing in the data frame so if we go up right in this atr function that is highlighted over here we were directly passing in the data as the data frame <coughs> and then we were making a copy of it calculating the atr and just returning the atr column um, to be put in the original data frame this is how the function was structured in this case it is not structured like that in this case we are asking for the three columns high low and close and also the period right in this also one thing that is not written over here is that high low and close should be npra okay there should not be data frame columns or data frame anything like that there should be npras the reason why this function is written like this is because this function in theory is not at all called individually so there is no place where we are just calculating the atr and putting it in some column right we do not need the atr like that the only reason we need atr is to uh, help us with calculating the super trend so this atr function is just been called into this super trend uh, function so the super trend np is the main function and atr is then just called inside of it so one thing that you need to understand here is, again is that uh, the super trend function does take the data frame as an argument and the first thing before doing anything else is that we take all of these uh, we take the sorry we take the high the low and the close columns from the data frame and convert them to numpy arrays this is the way you do it you have to write um dot 2 underscore numpy with two brackets and then that will convert these data frame columns into np arrays np arrays are like list okay um now in the next step we are calculating atr in which we are calling this atr underscore np function which is over here so because we have converted high low and close into np arrays so we can just use these arguments and pass use these uh, np arrays pass them into the atr function which will give us a new column inside the data frame with the name atr so now what we are doing is first condition in atr is we need to find the high minus low okay and then um, we in in the previous function normal function without 
the NPR is what we were doing is we were finding the absolute of high minus previous close the way to do it is that you can pass an argument called dot shift which we discussed in the previous video on any of the data frame columns and what will it do is for the current index it will give you the previous index value right um, the way to achieve this in NP arrays is a bit different um, there are multiple ways by the way this is what I've chosen to do what I've done is I've created another uh, NP array which is called shifted close what it does is it does the same thing it just uh, uses this NP dot roll function which uh, shifts the column by whatever period you pass in in, case, in this case I've passed in one and what we've done is the first instance there would be no value so what we've done is we've initialized the first instance of shift, shifted close NP array with a non value this will give us a column yeah, sorry this will give us a shifted close NP array which will have closes of the previous period now that is what we are subtracting from high and low over here and then using the NP dot absolute to sort of uh, get the absolute values right so if, for example if there is um, if there is if the high minus previous close is for example 50 right and low minus previous close is for example minus 65 so we do not want the maximum the maximum would be 50 we don't want that what we want is the absolute maximum right so when we convert them to absolute we get minus 65 right 65 we will convert it into absolute and that is what we want that is how you calculate ATR and then similarly true range is the maximum of these three um, there is a function called NP dot maximum which will give you the uh, maximum of all these three and create a new NP array for you uh, after that what we're doing is we are creating ATR um, as an NP array and what we're doing over here is First of all, we are converting the true range into a pandas series because we want to use this exponential moving average function, right? That pandas provides you with. To do that, we need to first convert the NPR into a pandas series because we can't, uh, we, we we don't get to use this EWM function with an NPR. Um, after we are done cal calculating the exponential moving average, we can then convert it into a numpy array like this, right? You. Over here, you can either convert it right now or you can later on convert it. I have done both. I've converted it over here. Later on, when I'm using it, I'm also converting it again, just to be sure. Okay, so this is the ATR function. It will return to you an NP array, which will have the ATR calculated in it. Okay, so this is what happens, right? We assign this ATR column uh, in a data frame. By the way, if you don't do this, if you just say ATR equals to this, that would be perfectly fine. Right, I'm just doing it over here so that I can show you guys the ATR being calculated. Right, if you just say ATR, right, say only ATR is equal to this selected, this will work just fine. So, we have gotten this data frame column, um, we've put the NPRA into it. Then, I have another, uh, I've created another variable called ATR, which is actually the numpy array. So, we convert it again into numpy. So, I'm doing this like, two steps just so that you guys can see uh, the ATR being calculated and it is in the data frame or not, like that. Now this is pretty self-explanatory. This is just like how we did it in the previous steps, right? Um, and then again, I told you that we need to initialize final and lower upper bands. How, how do we initialize those? We just use the values of basic upper and lower band and just put this, put it into them. So the way to do it over here is to do dot copy. It's the same thing, right? Um, yeah it's not nothing fancy over here something is different over here right um, in the previous functions we were using loops to get these values um, if I'm not wrong what what we what I'm doing over here is using list comprehensions to get these values right what are list comprehensions are basically a smaller way to write a thing and it will output a list to you and that is exactly what we want right it's the same thing the same um, arguments are there the same conditions if else everything is the same right the code is almost same now this step over here where we are initializing another numpy array with the name super trend what is it going to be like so when you call this function np dot full like what it does is that it will ask you first what is the array whose shape you want me to become right so we have arrays high low and close in this function right which are nothing but the data frame columns converted into NPRs. So this function will take the close NPR right the NPR with the name close and then what it will do is it will create a similar shaped NPR that means the dimensions are the same right it doesn't mean the values are the same 
in the next argument is where we pass the value. So what value do we want it to be filled with? I want it to be filled with NP, uh, NAND, so NAND values, right? Similarly, guys, this is exactly the same. Over here, uh, if you look at the function, that was the normal function. The reason this is so big is because we're using data frame and then you cannot access the rows directly in the data frame. You have to pass in arguments like dot i lock or dot lock in your cases, right? In this case, what we're doing is we're not using data frame, we're using an NP array. It acts like a list, right? So what is happening is we're just saying that this is super trend ka jo NP array. Hai, uske yth index par yao or ye dal. In data frame, you have to call a lot of things, right? So this is pretty self-explanatory, guys. If you will look at it and if you think about it in a way that, okay, we're not uh, doing it using a data frame where we have to think about the dimensions a lot a little bit more you know and where we have to think about uh, the looping and everything like that we have to think about how do we pick out elements using the i lock function or the lock function whatever it is in this case you have to just think about it as it is a list and you're working with a list and to get a value of a list you just pass in the num index number uh, between square brackets right and you get the value uh, you get that particular thing and then you can equate it to something and compare it and so on and go about your thing so guys i think this is pretty much it um if you guys go through this jupyter notebook that we will be uploading on the github repository you will understand it very easily all i'm saying is this is very very simple uh, there is nothing too complicated over here instead of data frames you're using numpy arrays numpy arrays are like list and to get particular elements we just pass in the index number and then we can do whatever we want to do right all the things that are changed over here are just things uh, the name of the functions right um, inst when we were initializing super trend in the previous function we were just ta making a new column on the data frame and equating it to numpy uh, equating into nan values in this case that is not the way to do it we are creating a new numpy array right and then how are we doing it we're doing it like this right so there are different ways of doing it this is the way i've chosen it if you go through this notebook um, i think all your doubts should be solved and i think this pretty much speaks for it you know um, considering that we are dropping from we, we have a big drop right we have almost how much i don't know how big of a drop it is but you can see it's a big drop and especially when we go to 15 minutes or we go to five minutes right where there would be even more number of rows this function would make things and make our life much easier so uh, yeah guys this is it from our side um, i hope you like the videos um, we will upload this notebook very soon on entirety codes uh, github repository and then you can access it from there go through it you know even try to convert your own functions into nprs right and see how it goes so that would be a lot of fun so i see you next time Hope you guys have a good day.